Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Pope Francis' prayer intention for March seeks to highlight the joy that the Sacrament of Reconciliation brings and reminds us that it's a loving and merciful encounter between us and God. Jesus waits for us, listens to us, and forgives us. In the heart of God, we come before our mistakes, says the Holy Father, highlighting once more the power of God's love has over our being and action. Receiving this sacrament isn't a matter of standing before a judge, but of going to a loving encounter with the Father who receives us and always forgives us. The center of confession is not the sins we declare, but the divine love we receive of which we are always in need, the Pope adds. And this love comes before all else, before our mistakes, the rules, judgments, and failings. Father Frederick Fornos, SJ, International Director of the Pope's Worldwide Prayer Network, pointed to Pope Francis' final words, Let us pray that God may give his church merciful priests and not torturers. And he added, It's not the first time that the Pope prays for this grace. As a good shepherd, he knows the people suffering their sins and their need to encounter ministers of mercy. This is the time of mercy. In his apostolic letter, Misericordia et Misera, at the conclusion of the ex extraordinary jubilee of mercy, he invited priests to be like Jesus, full of compassion and patient. It's a path of conversion for its priests to be witnesses of fatherly tenderness, far-sighted in discerning, and generous in dispensing God's forgiveness. He asked that their heart be close to the heart of Jesus and its grace. Let us continue this catechesis next Sunday. Horatio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other to see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. 
Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Kalungsod, pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Alex P. Montañez and Family, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Now Trucking Services, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Chardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Abilis, Quellans Food House, Mr. and Ms. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Deason, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Icasas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family, Fe Yamido and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word, and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group, Jose B. Ong, Engineer and Ms. Erlinda Aguilar and Family, Thanksgiving Intentions, Nida Tumalip, Anonymous, Elsa Garcia and Family, Magdalena Kukam, Malu Yap, Great Wall Trading, Davao Diamond Industry Incorporated, Ramlion Resources Incorporated, Ahensia Kimsan Incorporated, Mr. and Ms. Manolito S.B. by Senior, Ed Tombo and Family. Good Health, Lita Montalban, Mercy Evangelista, Linda Aguilar, Erning Aguilar, Henry and Lolita Evangelista. Birdy Intentions, Elsa Estomata, Gigi Limpin, Ben Batong, Luz Llanillo, Lina Oxales, Pasita Neri, Erlinda Aguilar, Ervin Gale Aguilar. Recovery and Healing of Emil Sison, Pai Cadena, Regina Cispedes, Arnel Famador, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Arias and Ben Batong, Esther G. Magbanwa. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, German, Erlinda, Claudio, Thelma, Marutas, Julio, Minandro Sr., Anastasia Filipa Eduardo, Ernesto Sr., Manuel, Renerio Sr., Conrada, Domingo Abraham Sr., Adelaida Linda, Lourdes Sofia, Abner Adelina, Roberto Mercilina, Elizabeth Mal Almacchio, Loreto, Francisco Deling Reyes, Ruben Sr., Lorenzo Mendoza de Vera, those who died of COVID-19, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission.
Prayer for the sick. Lord and Father, God without end and almighty, through your grace you gave us strength and help it help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, today's gospel passage reminds us that Jesus Christ is God's most holy temple. It also reminds us of the sacredness not only of all places of worship, but also of every human being, especially those who have been baptized. We are God's temples because He has imprinted in us His most sacred image in creation and has consecrated us for His service at our baptism. We desecrate ourselves whenever we commit sin, and we desecrate others when we fail to respect their dignity or lead them to commit sin. When this happens, Jesus becomes even more indignant than when He drove the traders out of the temple area in Jerusalem. The presider of this Holy Mass is Father James Cervantes, M.I.C., Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception, Tugbuk, Davos City. The choir during this Mass is the FSP Choir, Pauline's TV Choir Chapel, Davos City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Let us pray for the grace to follow Jesus more closely. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Ten Commandments enshrine values and duties which are valid not only for the Jews, but also for all human beings and forever. The First Reading A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all the commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not curb idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain, for the Lord will not live unpunished, the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then, either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, He rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and make it holy. 
honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true. All of them just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than a syrup or honey from the comb. Preaching a crucified Messiah has always seemed a vain enterprise. Yet, the fact remains that it is through the cross of Christ that all wise God has redeemed the world. Such is St. Paul's forceful reminder today. The Second Reading A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all, and he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus yes, So in our Gospel today we have this uh, passage where Jesus uh, cleanses the temple. You know, every year the Jews would make pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the temple for Passover. Uh, they say it could be up to a million Jews who would make this pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Uh, why were there uh, animals and money changers? Uh, because uh, some families would bring their animal with them for, for a sacrifice, but many would not. So they, they would just make the pilgrimage and they would buy. They would buy sheep, goats, uh, the turtle doves uh, for sacrifice. So that's why they were selling the animals. That's why they had money changers. And, and the, the animals would be made, uh, would be sacrificed as a sin offering, an atonement uh, for sins. Now Jesus does very something very interesting is he drives out the animals. All the animals he, he, he drives, he removes. Also the money changers, he also removes. And then he says something very interesting, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. You know, in a sense, Jesus is saying, you don't need the animals anymore. You don't need these money changers anymore. You don't even need this temple anymore. I am the temple. I am the sacrifice. You know, I will offer myself for sins for atonement for sins. I will fulfill everything in my person, in my being. You know, and eventually the temple was destroyed after Jesus died. So Jesus fulfills the sacrifice, you know. Uh, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Uh, this is what the priest says every time at Mass. And the Mass, in fact, is the representing of the one sacrifice of Jesus. You know, it's the representing of the one sacrifice of Jesus. And what is, what is important for us? When we come to Mass, we come as the Church, the body of Christ. We are members of Jesus' body. And if Jesus is offering the sacrifice of himself, he is the head, the members, 
the rest of the body, the church, must also offer sacrifice. You know, the priest says something very interesting. He says, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Right? So the rest of the body must also make sacrifice and unite the, our sacrifices with Jesus' sacrifice. Especially during this season of Lent, uh, we are making sacrifices. We started the first day by fasting. Fasting is a sacrifice. You know, we're doing penances, self-denial. We're giving up things, you know, our attachments, and we're giving them away to the poor, also sacrifice. And so we're making many sacrifices. So these are the things that we can offer, unite with Jesus' sacrifice uh, for the salvation of souls, in atonement for sins. You know, something very important what the priest is doing when he's saying the blessing for the bread, he's holding the paten with the host. You know, that is the time that the people, you offer your sacrifice. In a sense, you offer your positive, voluntary sacrifices. These are the, the times that you gave food to the hungry, you gave clothes to the naked, drink to the thirsty. You know, you put that on the paten spiritually. Don't just sit and watch the priest, you know, offer the bread. You also offer your sacrifice. And then what happens when the priest is offering the chalice? You know, the wine is in the chalice. You also offer your sacrifices. What sacrifices? The involuntary, you can say negative sacrifices, those ones that you have to endure, that you can't escape. This would be like the headache, your physical illnesses, your emotional uh, pains, spiritual pains, what you might say or call your crosses. This is what you offer, you put in that chalice, you know, this chalice of suffering. You put that in the, in the chalice because the body uh, is called to unite their sacrifices with Jesus. You know, St. Paul says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. He also says, I fulfill what is lacking in the suffering of Christ. So that means we have something to give, something very important to offer in this, with the sacrifice of Jesus. You know, there was a, a saint who was able to see what was going on during the Mass. And he noticed that every person had a guardian angel. You all have guardian angel. And during the offertory, he noticed that some angels were very happy and glad, and some angels were very sad. The glad and happy angels were ones that, the ones that they were assigned to, the people that they were assigned to, they had many sacrifices to bring. Your angel is actually the one who brings the sacrifice to the altar. Now why were some angels sad? Because the angel, the person that they were assigned to, didn't have any sacrifices, didn't have anything to bring. You know, and I, I think sometimes many Catholics, they come to Mass empty-handed. You know, they didn't make any sacrifices of the week. They just indulge, indulge, they do whatever they want. You know, so this Lent, we are called to make sacrifices. Our fasting, our penances, you know, the things that we give away. Remember those sacrifices, and then you bring them spiritually to the altar, to the Mass. Unite them with Jesus' sacrifice. And this is very powerful. It's for the salvation of souls. This is what we want. We want to save souls. You want to save souls? Yes? No? Offer your sacrifices. And this is something very powerful that we can do as members of Christ's body. So let us pray for this grace. Uh, to be very intentional this Lent to make sacrifices, to give up things, and then to bring them to the Mass, to unite them with Jesus for the salvation of souls. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell, third day rose again, ascended into heaven. And they sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Gathered together in the house of God to celebrate the most sacred act of worship, let us present our petitions for the needs of and intentions of all mankind, as we say, Lord, make us holy. Lord, make us holy. That the people of God all over the world may always offer the Eucharistic sacrifice with undefiled hearts, let us pray. Lord, make us holy. That all mankind may treasure the values enshrined in the Ten Commandments and live by them in perfect love for God and neighbor. Let us pray. That the legislators may be guided by the wisdom of God's law in formulating the laws of every civil society. Let us pray. That all human beings may be respected in their basic rights and never be subjected to humiliating treatment or conditions. Let us pray. Lord, make us holy. That all of us may treasure the sacredness of our own persons as well as that of others and never defile it through sinful actions. Let us pray. Lord, make us holy. For all the deceased brothers and sisters, may they be admitted to the joys of eternal life in heaven, especially the victims of COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission, through the mercy of God and the intercession of all the saints. Let us pray. Lord, To take up sacrifices and unite them with the sacrifice of Christ for the salvation of souls, let us pray. Lord, us holy. Lord of all holiness, you want to dwell in our hearts as in a most precious temple. Renew in us the awareness of your sanctifying presence. Cleanse us from all our impurities and reconsecrate us to your service forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Sins 
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life. Only say the word, my soul. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the Spiritual Communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. With a father's heart, that is how St. Joseph loved Jesus, whom all four Gospels refer to as the son of Joseph. Matthew, Luke, and the two evangelists who speak about Joseph tell us very little yet enough for us to appreciate what sort of father he was and the mission entrusted to him by God's providence. Patris Corde, Apostolic Letter of the Holy Father Francis on the 150th anniversary of the proclamation of St. Joseph as patron of the Universal Church. Patris Corde, No, St. Joseph, he is a good father and a model father. Available at the Pauline's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines at 60 pesos per copy. The Lord be with you. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful 
and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Till the end of my days, O Lord, I will bless your name, sing your praise, give you thanks all my days. You have made me less than a than a God, and have loved my heart with your love. With dignity and honor you clothed me, given me all over all. Till the end of my days, O oh Lord, I will bless your name, sing your praise, give you thanks for oh my name. Oh, people of God, we are God's temple. Do not be afraid.